I'm uh, Pim van Lommel, I'm a cardiologist from, from Holland and uh, I started in about 20 years ago just by reading a book about in death experiences to ask my patients who had survived a cardiac arrest if they could remember something from the period of their unconsciousness, from the period of clinical death. And then to my big surprise, within two years I had 12 stories out of 50 patients. And this started my scientific curiosity because according to our current concepts and what I have learned in university, it's impossible to experience consciousness during a period of cardiac arrest when your brain stops functioning. I was so intrigued by those stories that I started to study uh, from 88 to 98. Let's say you had an, um, a car infarction heart attack, of, of a traffic accident. At once the pain, the physical pain has gone. They feel at ease and they, and they wonder, am I dead now? And then they can have a, the feeling of the getting out of their body and they have a perception from above and they see their own resuscitation. They see the traffic accident from above. They see their own body and they don't feel any attachment to it. And then they're going to come in a, a dark space. Sometimes it's, they have fear for it, they're frightened. And then they see a small point of light where they go to and that is what they describe as a tunnel. And after this tunnel they come in a non-worldly dimension with beautiful colors, beautiful music, beautiful landscapes, and there they can meet deceased relatives, they can communicate with them, a kind of thought transfer. They can meet a light or a being of light. And in this being of light there is incredible unconditional love and also all wisdom. And with this light or this being of light they have a review of their own life from birth until the moment they died or they nearly died. And they got the insight uh, that every th each thought and word and act is kept with the influence on oneself and on others. The death experience has happened because of a critical medical situation. In adults it can be a period of clinical death by a cardiac arrest. It can be by a traffic accident or by coma, by a, a cerebral bleeding, a stroke. It can happen uh, by severe illness. It can happen by uh, near drowning. Th these are children. Uh, it can also happen by loss of blood, uh, women after childbirth. But it can also happen by depression, existential crisis, or without any cause, or by isolation, or by meditation. So you don't need a medical situation, which is uh, life-threatening, to experience such an ex uh, a near-death experience. And there have been inquiries in Germany and the United States. So in the Western world, there should be about 4.2% of the total population who should have had an NDE, which is, for Germany, 3 million people. The most intriguing aspects are the, that it is possible to have a perception out and above your body with uh, corroborative aspects. You, it's there for Ibel, that you can control the things they tell us about resuscitation, about the traffic accident. And it seems to be true. We cannot explain it by our current knowledge. And the fact that the ND happens during a period of cardiac arrest is also in inexplicable because uh, we know from other studies that the brain stops functioning. The cortex and the brain stem doesn't function at all at that very moment. And they have an enhanced consciousness, a paradoxical enhanced consciousness, which is much more than the normal waking consciousness we have. And this is also very intriguing. Well, most neuroscientists and philosophers and, and psychologists who work on, on consciousness, have the concept that the consciousness is the product of the brain. 
and that's what I call the materialistic concept. And the NDE is not to be explained by this concept. So we want to have to discuss this concept, which is an hypothesis, which has never been proven. And well, I come to the conclusion that the consciousness has must be experienced with an in a period of a non-functioning brain. They say, well, you don't measure anything, but there must be some activity in the brain which we can, which we cannot measure because the EEG is just the cortex and not the total brain. And the answer is that perhaps there should be some activity we cannot measure. But this is not the essence. The essence is that we know from current neuroscience that you need several centers to be active and to be communicating, the brainstem, several centers in the cortex and the thalamus and the hippocampus, who have to be connected to experience consciousness. And this is totally impossible in a cardiac arrest. Also other scientists say that when you do some electrical or magnetic stimulation of some parts of the brain, you can have an out-of-body experience. But there have never been an induced real out-of-body experience when you are out and above your body. Well, there's a typical change, a transformation in patients who had a near-death experience. The first of it, that they don't have any fear of death anymore. They lose the fear of death because the death was no death. There is no death at all. It's, it's another form of life without a body. I can live without a body, but my body cannot live without me. The other thing is that there's a new insight of life. It's all about love and acceptance and compassion. Well, the, the, there are some important aspects of it. One is for the for the healthcare. How do we manage patients in coma? If you are aware that they, perhaps they can perceive what is happening, that they can hear and perceive what's going on in the ICU. How do we manage patients who are dying when the consciousness is still there, or people uh, who are, who are uh, the, the, the memory is less, but the, the consciousness is still there. How do we discuss euthanasia? How do we discuss organ transplantation? Brain death, is it really death or is it the start of a process of dying? And what about consciousness in this process? This is one aspect. The other aspect is the scientific aspect, that when it really should be true that consciousness is not in the brain, but that the brain and the body has a a transmissive, a facilitating function and not a producing function for consciousness. And a whole view of human beings will change.